that the heritage of Palmyra goes far back in time. In the second millennium BCE, the site is mentioned as Tatmor in the Mari archives, and even earlier prehistoric material has been found at the site. So the perennial Efka source was really the source for life at Palmyra in the desert, and still is it today. But after the sack of the Romans of Palmyra in 273 CE, Palmyra disappeared out of the main history of the time. Of course, we know that Roman military legions and a small local society were still present in Palmyra in late antiquity and the early Islamic period and also the Middle Ages. Palmyra did not feature in world history as it had the first three centuries CE. It was only really rediscovered in a European framework in the 12th century CE when the Spanish rabbi Benjamin Tudela visited the site to study the Jewish societies of the region. In the 16th century, British merchants traveled to Palmyra to visit the place. They were based in Aleppo in northern Syria, but they never really made it because they were taken hostage by Bedouin tribes. So it was only in 1751 when James Dawkins and Robert Wood traveled to Palmyra and so to say rediscovered the site from the Western point of view that Palmyra truly made an entrance into European art and culture again. They had a large set of engravings done, drawings of different monuments of the time. That meant that Palmyrene architecture and architectural decoration got a large influence on many European monuments of the time. But not only in architecture did Palmyra get to have an influence in Europe. Also in music and literature, in operas made by Rossini in 1813, his opera Aurelian in Palmyra featured on La Scala in Milan. So the legacy of Palmyra and the history of the site was reinvented in a European framework. And the painting from 1758 commissioned by James Dawkins' brother after his death really depicts the moment in time where Dawkins and Wood rediscover Palmyra. So the West rediscovering the East, so to say, because the two young men are clad in Roman style white togas of course, we can't imagine that they really were wearing togas at the point of time, but this also goes to show the embodied symbols in this painting, which truly shows the legacy of the East as part of the European heritage. But Palmyra has been destroyed once again massively over the last few years. With the conflict in Syria, the site was put on the heritage sites in danger by UNESCO in 2013, while it had become a World Heritage Site in 2009. We know that systematic destruction of the site has gone on, including also looting, and in 2015 we have the documented entry of ISIS to Palmyra and the first large-scale destructions to be seen at the site. This included the systematic bombing of the famous Temple of Baal, that of Baal Shamin, and also of a set of very important early Islamic monuments, so saints' graves, which were the first monuments, in fact, to be bombed by the ISIS troops. The systematic looting has also meant that a lot of objects from Palmyra has come out on the international art market. And the art market has really seen a rise in not only Syrian cultural heritage objects in general, but also in particular the Palmyrene funerary portraits, which have been sold off to a variety of private collectors over the last years. We don't have an overview over how much damage exactly has been done to the site, but it seems to be really extensive. However, this goes to show how important cultural heritage becomes also in conflict situations and that we should take care of documenting what we have before it's too late. 
because in crisis situation, cultural heritage and the objects which we care for will be something that will be destroyed by counterparts. Because taking away cultural heritage from people also means taking away the last bit of hope of a better future. And this is why the study of the legacy of antiquity in general also is important and very central, not only to European identity, but to a much broader world identity as such. Thank you.